This lecture will review some of the um, bone disorders, infections, um, and joint disorders, and then we'll get into muscular disorders. So I will begin with different types of bone fractures. A complete fracture is when a bone is broken into two separate pieces. An incomplete fracture is when a bone is not broken all the way through. And one type of this is called a green stick fracture, when a bone bends on one side but breaks on the other side. And that's most common in children because their bones are a little bit more flexible. Here's a green stick fracture. You can see it's only fractured actually on one side. An open or compound fracture penetrates through the skin. So here's an example. It's gone out through the skin. A closed fracture, like shown here, is has not penetrated the skin. With a simple fracture, there's a single fracture line. So that would be um, like this one shown here. A comminuted fracture is when there's multiple fracture lines and bone fragments. So here's an example of that. An impacted fracture is when one end of a bone is forced into an adjacent bone. So here's an example of that when it's kind of pushed into a bone and that causes a fracture because of that pressure. A complicated fracture is when a broken, a broken bone has injured an internal organ. So for example, a broken rib pierces a lung. So there's involvement from other tissues or organs. Um, next, some infections. So there's just two of these. Osteomyelitis is a bacterial infection of bones. And Paget disease is chronic inflammation of bones resulting in thickening and softening. Osteoporosis, which is uh, shown in this picture here, and you can compare it to normal bone tissue to see the difference. This is when there's decreased bone mass and density, and it results in thin, fragile bones that are susceptible to fractures. Causes of osteoporosis include increased age, when a, someone is postmenopausal, so there's decreased estrogen that can lead to a decrease in bone mass, decreased mobility, smoking, and also calcium or vitamin D deficiency. All right, on this next uh, slide, this shows you some abnormal curvatures of the spine. The first one, looking from a posterior view, is scoliosis. This is when there's an abnormal lateral curvature of the spine. So it could go this way or it could go to the other side. Kyphosis is an abnormal outward curvature of the upper spine. So it almost forms like a humpback. And lordosis is an abnormal inward curvature of the lower back, also known as sway back. Okay, now for some joint disorders. There's a couple different types of arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease that leads to chronic inflammation of joints. This is usually genetic. Um, there are a lot of exacerbations and remissions, so that means that it gets worse and then it gets better and then it gets worse again. And it most commonly affects the fingers and the wrists, which are both shown in this picture. Osteoarthritis is a degenerative, non-inflammatory joint disease. This is when the cartilage at the ends of the bones wears down, and it's usually due to mechanical stress, so just simply overusing a joint. Um, this affects people who are runners and there's constant like pounding on the joints, especially at the knees. Underlying bone may be exposed um, if that cartilage wears away and bone spurs often develop around the damaged bone. This most commonly affects hands, knees, which are shown here, hips and the spine. And the last one is gouty arthritis, also just known as gout. This is a joint disease due to excessive amounts of uric acid in the blood. The uric acid forms crystals which become deposited in joints, causing inflammation. 
And this most often affects the big toe. So you can see the uric acid crystals accumulating here in the joint. It causes swelling um, and it, it's pretty painful. All right, oncology related to bones. Primary bone cancer arises directly from bone tissue, whereas secondary bone cancer arises from another area of the body and it metastasizes or spreads to bones. Sarcomas are cancerous tumors of connective tissues like bone or cartilage or muscle tissue. Fibrosarcoma develops in cartilage, whereas osteosarcoma develops in bone tissue. Now I'll move on to some muscle disorders, starting with muscular dystrophy. This is a genetic disease characterized by general atrophy and weakening of muscle tissue. Ultimately, there will be loss of all muscle control, and this is fatal, typically by the age of 30. You can see some various symptoms that are listed here. Myasthenia gravis. This is a neuromuscular disorder causing weakness of certain muscle groups. So this is when the communication between the nervous system and muscles is affected. So typically your nervous system, you have neurons that will tell muscles when to contract and when to relax. But if that communication isn't happening, that's the issue with this disorder. So what happens is that muscles become progressively weak. And the face is shown here because this most often involves muscles in the face and the, around the eyes. Um, sometimes around the mouth, you'll see like drooping of the mouth. Other um, diseases and conditions that affect the musculoskeletal system are on the next couple of slides. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a painful condition resulting from compression of the median nerve in the wrist. A contracture shown here is when you have fibrosis of connective tissue and it prevents normal mobility in the affected area. In this case, it's affecting these two fingers. They're constantly in this contracted position. Crepitation is a dry grating sound or sensation caused by bones rubbing together. A herniated disc shown here is the when you have rupture of an intervertebral disc's center and that can then put pressure on a spinal nerve, which are the yellow things sticking out from in between the vertebra. Hypotonia is decreased muscle tone, and hypertonia is increased muscle tone. Rickets is a form of osteomalacia in children caused by vitamin D deficiency. So it's the softening and weakening of bones. And um, as shown here, a lot of times they can sort of bend. In this case, the, the legs are bending out. Um, spondylosis is degeneration of vertebrae. And then the last two things, a sprain and a strain. These are often used interchangeably, but they're actually not the same thing. A sprain is overstretching or tearing of ligaments. Whereas a strain is overstretching or tearing of muscles and or tendons. All right, next section here is just some procedures associated with um, correcting some of these diseases and conditions that I just mentioned. Arthrography is radiography of a joint using contrast dye. Myelography is radiography of the spinal cord using contrast dye. Electromyography is the use of electrical stimulation to assess the health of muscles. An amputation is partial or complete removal of an extremity due to trauma or circulatory disease. So if blood isn't reaching um, a limb or a part of the body, then it's not gonna be getting nutrients and oxygen and the tissue can die. Arthrocentesis, that is shown here. That's the puncture of a joint space 
using a needle to remove fluid. Arthroscopy is visual examination of the interior of a joint and bone grafting is implantation or transplantation of bone tissue from another part of the body or from another person to serve as a replacement for damaged bone tissue.